does not even say cover your head or cover your ear. But he talks about the khimar. It's similar to, brothers and sisters, if I were to say to you, put on your hats, do I need to tell you on your head? Do I need to tell you on your head? Why not? Put on your hats, do I need to say on your head? No, why not? Tell me guys. Because a hat specifically is made for your head. If I tell you put on your socks, do I need to say on your feet? Well, unless I'm talking to a year and a half old child, you know, the child might put the socks on their head. But really, do I have to tell you socks on your feet? No, because socks were made specifically for your feet. If I tell you put on your gloves, do I need to tell you on your hands? Guys, you, no, no, why? Because the gloves were made specifically for the hand. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says khumur, he does not need to say head anymore or hair anymore because where else would you wear the khimah? This is what you need to understand when you read the Quran. Right, the khimar is a head covering, exclusively a head covering. It is used to cover the head, meaning the hair. And Allah says, let it fall down over the opening of your gown. So don't just tie that the back here. All right, sometimes we see some young sisters, mashallah, and may Allah bless them and help them. You know, sisters, if you, uh, if you start with the hijab and you're doing it like this at the back, that's a good first step, right? Uh, it's better than not wearing it at all. But, you know, putting it at the back here, no, that's not what Allah says. He says, let it come down in front here. Let it fall down in front of the chest so that the opening in your gown is covered. It, it provides you with more cover and protection. So the purpose of the hijab is not to repress women. First of all, it's not a man-made thing. It's a divine institution. When, when our sisters do it, they're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man. They're not pleasing any man as, the, as the, the, these believers want us to, to believe here. And some Muslim people, no. You're not pleasing your husband or your father or this or that. You're worshiping the Creator. What greater honor is there than for a person to worship the Creator? It's ibadah. It's an act of worship. Yes, you know, your, your husband or your father or whatever might be happy. But really it's not about him. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition to that, some other, let me just quickly finish this issue. Some other uh, principles of the dress code is that it has to cover the parts of the body that must be covered. And we all know that for a female, the awrah is the entire body except the face and the hands. Alright, so you can't go, you know, short sleeves or sleeveless or bring up the, the dress or the pants or whatever up to the knees, no. Because the whole body has to be covered. So uh, a, a requirement of the dress code, even for men, is that the aura must be covered. For the male, of course, the aura is from the belly button to the knees, so you know the, he might be allowed to uh, expose more of his body. But for the sister, no. The whole body except the face and the hand. So the first thing is the aura must be covered. Number two, the clothing must be loose-fitting. Sisters, I need you to understand that the shape of the body is part of the beauty that Allah says وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنَّ Allah says and they should not expose their beauty except to their husbands and their fathers and their husbands' fathers and so on, right? Allah mentions a list of the mahari the men who are mahram for you the shape of the body is a part of the beauty that must and should be covered, except for the mahal. So the clothing has to be loose fitting, it should not be tight fitting, so as to describe the shape and the curve of the body. You know the Prophet subhanAllah, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said Allah has cursed a type of women, Three types of people he said in the hadith actually. He said Allah has caused three types of people. And there is one type I haven't seen in my lifetime yet. Women who are clothed yet naked. SubhanAllah. 
He said, the women are wearing clothing, yet they are naked. Now you tell me, what does this mean, brothers and sisters? It means one of two things. Either the clothing is tight-fitting, so it describes and it shows the shape of the body, or it's so thin that you can see through and see the body underneath, which is the other requirement of the dress code. That the, the clothing should not be of thin material, whereby you can see through and see the skin or the shape of the body underneath. Because the whole idea is to cover up the shape to, some, to a large extent. By wearing loose clo loose fitting clothing as well as clothing that are not thick or see through, so that you can protect that. He said, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, that these three people, one of them, he said, are women, Nisa'un Kasiyatun Ariyat, for those who know Arabic. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Women who are wearing clothing, Kasiyat, they have on clothes. But they're ariyat, but they're still naked. The only thing it can mean is that either the clothing is too tight or it's too uh, see-through. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is one of the three types of people, we don't need to go into the other two, that they will never ever get the smell of paradise. La yashumuna ra'ihat al-jannah. They will never ever get the fragrance smell the fragrance of paradise. That's how far away from paradise they will be. So the aura must be covered. It has to be loose fitting so that the shape is not uh, described or, or shown. It should not be too thin so you can see through and still see the shape of the body underneath. Number four, the combination of colors and style should not be such that would attract unnecessary and unwanted attention. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you see people with certain combination of colors that actually catch the eye. It, you know, it makes you look again and again. So when you're dressing, the purpose is not to impress people. Remember, dressing is ibadah. Because Allah instituted this. And in ibadah, there is no showing off. It should be done to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the combination of colors and styles should be such that it does not attract unnecessary or unwanted attention. And finally, brothers and sisters, and this is the crucial thing here, we should always examine our hearts and look at our motivation for doing what we're doing, even in dressing. So when we stand in front of the mirror every day, morning, evening, whatever it is, and we're getting dressed to go anywhere, we should always check in with our hearts. Why am I dressing this way? If my answer is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is ibadah. If it is anything else, I need to rethink my motivation because it's not ibadah. So dressing to show off, you know, the only style like this, you wow everybody with your style or your fancy, you know, way that you try the khimar or whatever, no. Do it, do it for the right reason. And the people will still be awed, mashallah, by your style or whatever else. Abu Bakr Siddiq did not do things to show off, yet Allah elevated his status in the land. People, when we talk about him, it is with so much of reverence and respect and love, subhanAllah. But the man never did anything for show. But this is the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people are sincere with him, he, part of the reward, part of the reward is that he elevates them, the mention of that, the esteem of that person. So you want recognition, brothers and sisters, be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will give you recognition. Because if Allah elevates a person, then that person is truly esteemed. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lowers a person, then that is the person who is despised. So I hope when I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know. And you know what? The last thing I want to say is I have also noticed, and may Allah bless our sisters, may Allah strengthen them, may Allah reward them. Brothers, 
See, when we dress with our shortened pants and a jacket and we step out onto the subway, nobody knows we're Muslim, so we blend it. But when our sisters dress with their hijab, as soon as they step through their, step out of their homes, everybody knows that they're Muslim. They can't blend in them. So they're doing a major form of da'wah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and may Allah support them. May Allah give them the iman and the strength and the knowledge that they need to face this challenge. It's not easy, especially in this day and age with all that's happening in the world. I write all the comments and stereotyping that's going on. But having said that, I have still noticed sisters, mostly the younger ones. May Allah bless them. You know, I see sisters at the bus stop, right? I travel on the subway. I go downtown a couple of days a week at the masjid there. I see sisters with khimar, mashallah, right? This head covering. And then they have tight jeans and tight t-shirts. That's not hijab. Hijab is not literally just having clothing on. No. It is to cover what is supposed to be covered. And part of what is to be covered is the shape of the body. By the way, you know when the ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 59, when Allah says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women to wear their jilbab. You know what the jilbab, jilbab is really all about? It is to cover the shape of the body. That's what it's about. Now when you go out, put on this jilbab, this abaya as we call it these days, so that the shape of the body, it's not visible, it's not seen, it's not described. So I encourage our sisters. I'm not trying to put the sisters down. I'm not trying to belittle the sisters either. I'm telling you up front, I know it takes a lot of courage. I have worn my gown to the Scarborough Town Center. I don't have a problem, but I know that it's still, you know, you know people are staring at you. You know, you know, you're wondering what's going on in people's minds. So I know, and I don't wear it all the time, like every day. But our sisters who dress with hijab, subhanAllah, they, you know, that's an everyday thing for them. So, I'm not in any way trying to belittle the sisters or to put them down. The opposite sisters, I really, really, you know, take my hat off to you for the strength and the courage that it must take for you to dress with hijab. All I'm doing as your humble brother in Islam is to encourage you and to support you so that you can fulfill your obligation in the best way possible. Because this is ibadah, this is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even for our sisters who are probably not at that point where they are ready to dress full time with hijab, you are no less a good person in our eyes. We support you, we pray for you, we're always here. We will continue to advise you and encourage you and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your hearts and He will also give you the strength and the Iman and the knowledge and the confidence that you need in order to submit and surrender to His commands, not my command or any, any other person's command. So I hope and I pray that inshallah, uh, you know, I've taken the, uh, quite a bit of extra time, but the, the issue needs the time to explain and to deal with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our sisters. May He continue to strengthen them. Uh, no sisters that in this country, when you dress like that, you are engaging in major da'wah, major da'wah. And you don't even have to say a word. You don't have to say a word. Just from the way you dress, mashallah, you are doing da'wah. To everybody who can see you out there. And we know that that is the objective of the Muslim's life, to invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is by action or by words. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message is revealed for the upliftment of human beings, men and women, in this world as well as in the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us and motivate us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow that. And may He show us the wrong as wrong and help us to avoid that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearts firm on the straight path. May He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. And may He protect us and our children and our youth from all that is harmful and hurtful. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ali wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We still have one more issue to finish the 50th of the Hijrah, but we'll deal with that inshallah uh, in our next session.